I'm happy to be joined by Alan Van Slyke. He's the senior producer here on Gears of War Judgment. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, absolutely, thanks. So uh, we've learned some interesting things today. Uh, A, that there's really two single player games, but let, let, let's start off with Judgment. This is a prequel. It happens right after the events of Emergence Day when the locusts kind of make themselves apparent to uh, the human beings. Um, was it exciting getting to finally tell this event that has been in the fiction of all three of the games that, that preceded it? Absolutely, it's a big opportunity for us. I mean, I think coming off of Gears of War 3 and taking your breath and deciding what we wanted to do next and knowing that we wanted to go back and really recapture that sense of intensity and urgency and then having the opportunity with the Gears fiction to go back, as you said, in those you know couple weeks right after Emergence Day and, and experience that, yeah, what a great opportunity. We couldn't pass that up, something to explore in Gears of War Judgment. And I, 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 th I think the part that, that really struck me is you really get a better sense of the world that it once was because its fall was just beginning, whereas obviously in the other Gears, games you see it with just a hint of what it once was. Yeah, I mean Gears 3 is very destroyed beauty. It's 15 years after the fact and, and so everything has been destroyed long ago but in Judgment I mean, you're in the weeks right after the, the locusts have, have invaded, and so the suitcases are still packed, but maybe haven't been picked up. The evacuation routes are still spray painted on the walls. The trees are still burning. So everything is, is actually being destroyed, or, or very freshly destroyed, you know, in judgment, which is a very big difference between that and Gears of War 3. Well, let's talk also about some of the changes to the controls, which really do kind of give the game a sense of immediacy. Um, you're, you're switching uh, between weapons on the Y button, and you're throwing grenades with the left bumper. Um, are, are, are there any other significant changes to the control scheme? No, those are the big changes. So yeah, we got away from the D-pad, and exactly as you mentioned, why quick weapon swap, primary, secondary, in and out. And you know, you can still hold down the the left button if you really want to aim that that grenade. But yeah, just hit it, quick toss. And you know, we made some other uh, improvements as well, some other streamlining as well. So now you know, auto vacuum of ammo as you as you as you run over it. So no more like stop bend down, pick up the ammo, everything is about kind of go, 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 let's keep it moving and, and really amplify that sense of urgency. Um, especially with the ammo pickup, thank you so much. This has been <laughs> sort of a pet peeve of my mini games from mine. Um, but um, what brought you guys to make these changes to a control scheme that really kind of helped define gears? It, it, it took me you know, about five, ten minutes to realize, no, I'm playing a, a familiar game but in, in a much different way. Yeah, I think it's two things. It's it's really you know always always pushing boundaries and always trying to improve the game, make it more fun with every iteration as developers. But it's also embracing the community, right? I mean, we bring in the community, we fly them in, and as we're prototyping and and experimenting with these ideas, we hand them the controller. What do you guys think of this? Do you think this is as compelling as we do? And make sure that they're embracing the changes that we're making along the way as well. So today we've also been it's, it's been announced that there's aftermath. This is um, a whole other single player mode that you unlock by earning points, stars, I guess, uh, through, through the course of playing Judgment. Um, was this always intended? I mean, it takes place in the Gears of War 3 universe, so I, I have to wonder if this was sort of an excerpted um, aspect of Gears of War 3 that just didn't make it to the final product. Yeah, we were really fortunate with, with after Gears of War 3, we had a real opportunity to um, to go back as a prequel, right, with Gears of War 1, but then also bookend it, right, with Aftermath. So we're really fortunate to kind of like wrap both, you know, give people who love Gears of War 3 that additional content, those, you know, those same characters that they know and love, then give them a little bit more of that, you know, Gears of War 3 gameplay, and then bookend the trilogy with the, with the prequel that is Judgment. Yeah, well, it looks like Aftermath is kind of a, a side story, you know, that w when some of the characters, Baird included, um, had to go get the submarine, so what, what, what happened on that mission? Exactly, so where they live off in Gears of War 3 is, is Baird and Cole go off to get reinforcements and go off to get transport, and you don't really know what happened to them, and this fills in that gap and explains, you know, <laughs> kind of exactly what they went through to try to secure that transport, and of course they might run into some uh, familiar faces along the way during Aftermath. Now obviously this should sound very intriguing to anyone who's a fan or has played the Gears of War games, but because it's something you unlock in the course of playing the single player, I have to wonder, like, how hard is it for the more modest player to be able to get to this rather appealing content? Yeah, it's not about the challenge. So it's 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 gonna you're gonna find that it's really really easy to unlock. You're not gonna have to you know if you're the person who doesn't want to opt into declassifications and some of the challenge modifiers, you're not gonna have to do anything like that to unlock it. You'll play you'll play through you know a, a early portion of the primary campaign and then you'll find that you've unlocked aftermath. And you know we also have a kind of a, a carrot in there for you so that you know right out of the box you can look at the aftermath kind of teaser video 
video and, and you know decide if that's something that you're interested in pursuing. Uh, but yeah, not a huge time investment. It's, it's not a you know it's going to be necessary to unlock that. We'll we'll give it to you pretty easily. Um, yeah, you, you mentioned the the alternate modes. This is going back to judgment. There's something called declassify where you can choose to play the level, but with a different set of enemies and a different set of behaviors. Yeah, it's kind of like that. So the declassification system, so since you're telling the story in a testimonial style at the military tribunal, there's there's kind of the, the, the testimony that's known, that's known to the public, and then there's also this classified testimony. And so as you're playing through the campaign, you'll come up against a crimson omen in the, in the world, and it's, it's an opt-in system, so it'll, as you walk up to it, you know, it'll be an optional system that'll add challenge and add rule sets and kind of constrain the, you know, the, that specific playthrough of the, the way that you play. And so you can imagine, like, as the testimonial is happening, Loomis will say, hey, Baird, tell me what happened. And that's the fork in the road with the declassification where Baird can either say, well, we, we fought the wretches and we, you know, we stomped them. Or you can, if you opt into the declassification, his testimony might change. And he might say, well, as it turns out, we were really limited to shotguns and the visibility was greatly reduced. And so everything was coming into melee range. And then you're off playing in a different direction. And obviously, it opens up reason to go back and replay many of the levels. Lots of replayability in there for that, yeah. Um, obviously, Gears has become very famous for the cooperative modes, horde mode, and then beast mode. Um, those aren't here now. It's, it's survival mode, which I kind of want to say it's a hybrid, but you do just play as the COG. Yeah, there's a couple of evolutions of, you know, so, yeah, Gears 1 co-op, Gears 2, uh, Horde, Gears 3, Beast, and there's, you know, continuing to evolve. And so, um, yeah, absolutely, survival. If you're interested in co-op um, co play, this is survival is for you. So, class-based system, you can play as a medic, you can play as a scout, an engineer, a soldier, um, with four of your buddies, um, trying to defend against the ever-increasing kind of waves of locusts coming at you, and you're trying to protect your, your, your objectives. So, yeah, this is, the, this is the next evolution, the class-based evolution of COG versus Locust defense scenario in, in survival mode. We have another mode um, that we're really proud of as well called Overrun, which is five on five, so it's competitive multiplayer. Um, and so it's five COG with the classes versus five playable Locusts. And COG are always defending and Locusts are always attacking. And, and you, you, take a, you, know, you take an opportunity to defend and you take an opportunity to attack and you see kind of who does better. Um, in, 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 in terms of these changes and not doing what had kind of been established, maybe many players had expected, were you worried that uh, you, you, you weren't going to give them what they were going to be clamoring for? I mean, you, you, you guys seem quite confident with what you've done. Yeah, I mean, bringing in the community all along the way, and especially like the incredible reception we got for Overrun at E3, um, really gives us a lot of, you know, we're really excited to offer these modes, and like everybody that gets their hands on them is really enjoying them, so we can't wait for the, the Gears fans, you know, even the old hardcore Gears fans to get their hands on the new modes and, and give, them a, give them a spin. So, I mean, it, 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 it looks like where I knew there was some skepticism as to what Judgment was going to be, this seems to be that multifaceted package that we've come to expect from a Gears of War game. Uh, when, when is it hitting the shelves? March 19th. March 19th. Well, thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. Thanks. Right.